Ukraine is a nation of just over 52 million people. It is situated in Eastern Europe on the Black Sea and bordered by Russia, Belarus, Poland, the Czech Republic, Hungary, Romania, and Moldova. For three years now, since just after the breakup of the Soviet Union, it has been free of domination by foreign governments. But the blessing of independence has brought the burden of freedom. No longer able to rely on Moscow to support its military and other services, most of Ukraine's people are suffering hardships. Productivity has plummeted, prices have skyrocketed, and public services have suffered. Nowhere is that more dramatic than in health care. Medical personnel, educated and resourceful, work in facilities reminiscent of 50 years ago in the United States. You went to physicians' homes, then you listen to, to Prokofiev and Tchaikovsky and, and the beautiful icons and, and pottery and artwork and, and rugs and bookshelves full of books and, and artwork. Dr. Andres Vari is among the dozens of medical personnel from Millard Fillmore Hospitals in Buffalo who have extended helping hands to the people of Ukraine. For a year and a half now, they have gone to Ukraine and have brought Ukrainian medical specialists to Buffalo. While the partnership has provided some hardware and medications to Ukraine, most of all, it has provided information. Information on how Ukraine can do more with what it has through information management and organization very interested in healthcare management issues, infection control. Perhaps the surprise was the total decentralization of healthcare here. That is, uh, you have entities of hospitals which make their own decisions and uh, uh, plot their own futures as opposing to uh, being centralized. They are ready to be uh, empowered and they are ready to take on very enthusiastic people and they are ready to, to take on the, the challenge of uh, being their own, uh, own bosses. And that is a brand new experience for almost everyone in Ukraine. For five days we visited Buffalo's two partner hospitals. We saw the dedication of their medical personnel in the face of extreme difficulties. We watched the Buffalo partners try to assess what they've done objectively. They began the partnership because of idealism and duty. Well, this is what America is all about, and that is by helping others, and by helping others in a way you certainly help yourself. But good intentions alone don't guarantee good results. Over the next week, we would see how these ambassadors from Buffalo had touched the lives of people just starting out on the long and winding road that leads to freedom. Most men and women on the street in Ukraine would tell you things were better under the Soviets. At least salaries hadn't dropped to the equivalent of $15 a month where they now stand. There was universal health care, although it was primitive by Western standards, and today even that health system is in critical condition. A year and a half ago, Millard Fillmore Hospitals of Buffalo responded to the need and joined in a partnership with two hospitals in Ukraine to teach and to help guide this emerging democracy to full independence. Well, this is what America is all about, and that is by helping others, and by helping others in a way you certainly help yourself. Now they return to objectively see whether they have truly helped. They head for the western region of Ukraine by way of the nation's capital city. An enormous Soviet monument dominates the skyline. In the Ukrainian language, the city is Kyiv, but the world knows it as Kiev. Kiev has special meaning for me. Three of my four grandparents came from the city. My father's father left Kiev in 1905 at the age of 15. He crossed Europe all the way up to England by himself, and from there he took a boat to Philadelphia. If he could see Kiev today, he'd find the city's character hasn't changed all that much. It is still heavily Russian, with Soviet reminders here and there. Well, this is the square which is called the square of Leninsky Komsom. Uh, yeah, this is the Young Communist. Young right? Communist League, right. Valery Yagorov lives in Kiev. His father is Russian, his mother Ukrainian. He points out the former Lenin Museum. It's now an office building and concert hall. Nearby, a little girl plays on the steps of a plaza that once had a statue of Lenin as its focal point. The statue was taken down last year. But a few blocks away, 
statue of Lenin. Yeah. I'm I, surprised it's still up here. Yeah, it's up here. Actually, in 1930 something, it was awarded was the first prize at the New York Exhibition of Fine Arts or whatever. This particular stage. Here. Oh, so this is a work of art, and yeah. it'll probably stay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> The dual nature of Kiev becomes apparent in the language. Many people here speak Russian in addition to Ukrainian. This businessman tells us in Russian that taxes are too high and he can't get a passport to do business with Americans. I would like to learn how to work in earnest to learn Western business practices. His business, selling produce, depends on the superb quality of Ukrainian farm products. Ukraine has some of the finest growing soil in the world. Many people have turned from full-time professions to part-time farming as the most efficient way of putting food on the table in these hard times. Across town, a shiny new business called Bonbon bon is open. It's a casino and coffee shop. We are told it's a joint venture with Hungary and Austria. But a resident here tells us it's mafia guys, a derisive term for either organized crime of any ethnic background or somebody with otherwise unexplained riches. Whatever it is in this brave new free enterprise world, Ukrainian Dr. Boris Uspensky says its owners are going to have to speak English. Now the, change, the time changed for Ukraine and more and more people are studying more intensively English. Many Ukrainians do recognize the need to turn outward to the world to speak and to be understood. It's a very small and shrinking world and uh, I think we owe something to uh, other societies uh, to help them. And so they will, through a delicate partnership in a perilous time. Okay. The Millard Fillmore team will go from Kiev to the western region by train. It's the eve of the religious holiday of the Greens, as it's known, and even the cars are decorated with branches and leaves. The train travels through the night. The trip is 320 miles over rolling plains. The farmland is among the best in the world, and still the massive agricultural enterprises here are unprofitable. By morning, the team from Buffalo arrives in the city of Lviv, the home of Buffalo's partner hospitals. Their hosts present them with flowers and warm welcomes. Dr. Severin Dibba. He's the director of the, uh, the railroad hospital, one of, the, uh, uh, to see you. one of our partner hospitals Thank you. Thank in Ukraine. You. Beautiful railroad station. Beautiful. It's Sunday morning, and an overflow crowd packs St. George Ukrainian Catholic Church in Lviv. Although this is a holy day, we are told this kind of attendance is not at all unusual. The Soviets suppressed the church for 70 years. Now it is blossoming again, along with a deep sense of Ukrainian nationhood. Dr. Andras Vary of Buffalo left his native Hungary for the United States in 1969. What he sees here is all very familiar. I think this is just uh, an other expression of their tremendous desire for, for independence. They are reasserting their uh, the, the religious beliefs. They did not have an opportunity to uh, exercise uh, religion during the, the Soviet uh, rule. And they have to uh, supply everything for themselves, including material goods as well as uh, their spiritual uh, um, bread and bread and water. It is church liturgy and individual memory that preserve Ukraine's often tragic history. Centuries of foreign domination and decades of disasters. Joseph Stalin's starvation of some seven million Ukrainians and Chernobyl's poisoning of the environment with nuclear radiation. The past provides a common history, but the young people can fulfill the nation's destiny. For Ukraine, it's a time of great uncertainty and great opportunity. We became tourists for an evening. We saw a city that was founded centuries before any European landed in North America and 500 years before there was a United States. Lviv had been an industrial and trade center for centuries. Now it is the heart and soul of the nation, the center of Ukraine's sense of nationhood. As you look around, what becomes apparent is that an issue that is unaddressed is the issue of public health and preventive medicine. 
The good news is that few people have cars, and so many people walk a lot. The bad news is alcoholism. The rate is 10 times that of the United States, and half the people smoke. Death from heart disease is more than twice the American rate, as are fatalities from respiratory disease. Tom Feldman of Millard Fillmore Hospitals in Buffalo tells me Ukrainian health officials are indeed aware of the problems, but they're not optimistic about solving them in this generation. You see a lot of it being changed primarily with the, uh, with the kids. The kids are beginning to understand it. The adults, they're so thankful that they're getting from day to day that they haven't stepped back and had a chance to recognize some of those public health issues. We have three problems. We have three three problems. Problem. Smoking, alcoholism, and diet are indeed major problems in Ukraine, says Dr. Vladislav Dumsky. But there are other considerations, he says, air and water pollution, and something else. We have a problem with Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Chernobyl, the nuclear power plant that blew radioactive death over northern Europe eight years ago. Dumsky's hospitals are dealing with cancers from that disaster still today. He says America can help with diagnostic equipment. Tom Feldman recalls how Ukraine's first medical delegation to Buffalo came during the Soviet breakup in 1991. They came on a Russian era flat plane and they went back home on an air UK, Ukraine plane. What they returned to was an independent nation at its moment of birth. You enter the Lviv Railway Hospital through a door that leads to a modest courtyard. Overlooking the courtyard is the office of Administrator Dr. Severin Dibba. He sits behind Ukrainian and American flags telling of hard times. He tells of his duty to care for railway employees, but a third of his patients are non-employees from seven regions. Cancers are increasing. That's the result of Chernobyl and of course ecological situation. And he says he hasn't bought sheets or towels for two years. We recycle and sterilize everything, he says. We're short on anesthesia, virtually out of insulin and antibiotics. We have to produce the antibiotics of our own because some years ago everything was produced in, the Ru in Russia. But one thing they do have is office equipment and computers from the United States Agency for International Development. But nobody has yet installed them. They haven't done it now because of a, a major security problem here in terms of theft. They seem to have lost a great deal of equipment. One of the great financial problems facing the hospital is the same one plaguing all of Ukrainian society. That is inflation. Inflation is running 3,000% a year now. That means prices have risen 30-fold, while hospitals' income and salaries remain the same or fell. Across town, hospital employees know those facts of life only too well. A mechanic who repairs hospital vehicles says he has not been paid in months. Just go around the city of Lviv, he tells us, and see the buildings some people are putting up with cellars and all sorts of luxuries we can't imagine. And what can we buy with our 300,000 coupons? Coupons, of course. That's about $7 a month. At the hospital, meanwhile, workers just completed a new operating room. It took a lot of effort, a lot more effort here than it would take in the States to do. But they're still having the same problems we saw a century year ago. Their equipment poor, the resource poor. Dr. Severin Dibba says, yes, once we had money but nothing available to us, now... We can buy whatever we want, any medicine, any equipment, but we have no money. To get money, Ukraine's hospitals must turn outward toward international joint ventures with business to open doors with the West. That has already begun. Uh, Dr. Sarah Serkin has been here in Lviv for 10 days now. Have you been pleased with what you... Oh, Mary, we've had a wonderful time, a wonderful experience. Make good friends. She and assistant Kim Help You began from scratch because they say while the hospital is talent rich, it is equipment poor. That means doctors can't get the experience they need. We need to get them a keratometer. And there's the matter of converting equipment to the European electrical system. Their engineers here are wonderful. Really, are fantastic. Good. Their engineers, oh. are, I mean, they could take a fuse and, and rewire the fuse. And I've been very excited. I, I think that I think we're bringing them some new technology, some new techniques. I think we're starting to teach them some things. 
and uh, I'm looking forward to coming back in about a year to see how much progress they've made on their own and to kind of upgrade what they've gotten and make sure that they've learned the lessons we've taught in a sense. But there is the problem of maintaining the donated equipment and continuing the supply of medications. Sharon Weinstein is the U.S. Administrator of the Partnership Program. One could never expect an American institution to be an ongoing source of supplies for their NIS partner. The hospital's head doctor, Severin Dibba, recognizes that. Bida, Bida. Problem. Problem. You have to go into the desired refraction, which I'll show you how to do. The problems don't seem so apparent in the midst of work, in the intensity of camaraderie, in sharing and showing, in recognizing potential. They haven't even used a microscope before for eye surgery. So we're like, OK, back to basics. We'll start from the beginning. So we have them ahead, farther ahead than a week ago before we came. You're doing what a doctor should do, aren't you? Yes, yeah. It's, it's really practicing medicine and making the, the, the best of what facilities that you have. It's a love that transcends obstacles, that bonds people in the common quest for healing. So she'll be perfect. Yeah, okay. 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 A sculpture of mother and children graces the lawn. Dr. Arena Zablotskaya welcomes us. We had met weeks before in Buffalo. The hospital's interior is light and airy. It appears sparkling clean. It is, in fact, all but closed for a month for cleaning, which is why we're told women patients here might have to deliver elsewhere. But there are pleasant surprises. The computer from, uh, from AIHA. Yeah. And there's our fax machine. Business equipment is up and running, in contrast to the system under lock and key at the railway hospital due to theft. And workers will soon build birthing rooms for husbands and wives together. Five, maybe, a room uh, such as in Buffalo for the really? For one Birth, Birthing rooms? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Birth. such as in yeah. Buffalo in suburban yeah. I would say that they are uh, 25, 30 years ahead of their times, even just locally. And what they plan to do with the birthing rooms uh, copying uh, or emulating uh, what's in, what they have seen in Buffalo, that's going to put them uh, light years ahead of, uh, of what, what's the standard. The Buffalo visitors also confront a difficult issue here. Uh, here is abortion. No. Abortions are performed here. Doctors say they first strongly advise women against it. But Dr. Zablotskaya says with the scarcity of contraceptives and Ukraine's failing economy, many women want abortions. Due to these economic problems, our women do not want to have the second, the third child, and sometimes even the first. I was frankly a little taken back by it. Millard Fillmore President Charles Van Voorst says Ukraine's doctors are responding to difficult conditions in their own country. I think they share our same views, but I think they also see a, a need to, to react socially to some elements of the population in a manner that maybe we might not want to see them do, but I think is indigenous to this area and to this time. This time has produced a hospital that has responded to contemporary problems with strong leadership. I'm a practicing doctor. I'm performing operations myself, the most difficult ones, and they see it. I'm making an example for them. You enjoy what you do, don't you? Yes, of course. We enjoy, enjoy it very much. They understand it and they believe that so hard time won't last forever. Everything is to be changed. Most of doctors of our hospital are young and they and then try to find something new to, to work better than we work now. And uh, that's why you have such a team uh, which works, which works and has a good future. It's a future that may turn out to have been born in Buffalo. It began as Dr. Vladislav Dumsky's birthday tribute to Millard Fillmore Hospital President Charles Van Voorst. But it soon became a discussion on Ukraine's common obsession, Chernobyl. If you help mm -hmm. uh, radio apparatus, mm -hmm. uh, radio diagnostic apparatus, mm -hmm. uh, X-ray. Well, it was a major accident for which his office here that we're in right now is responsible for. And they're looking for help in terms of equipment and other kinds of radiation safety and radiation uh, uh, expertise. Among several rail cars dedicated to medical diagnosis, one is filled with radiation gear. It is used to bring services to the sick, including the children of Chernobyl. The nuclear plant that spewed poison over northern Europe in 1986 is back online. 
and there are over a dozen plants like it in Ukraine. Dangerous to run, but too expensive to fully fix. Big money. Some 80 miles southwest of the city and hundreds of miles from Chernobyl, the Carpathian Mountains soar into the sky. The medical team from Buffalo is visiting an army camp and sports training center here. It's also a summer camp for kids, and among them, we're told, are children from Chernobyl. Doctors send them here for the sun and the air, while Chernobyl and other reactors like it continue in operation. They're running at maximum capacity in order to take, take this, <coughs> no this, use. this system that they had and move it forward. So they're, they're, they're expanding and cranking this up every day. And so we raised glasses to birthdays and friendships and to our health with more than just a passing thought of Chernobyl's children. The city center is a half-mile-long plaza. Residents gather here most nights to play chess, to argue politics, and sometimes go to the opera. The opera house is one of six in Ukraine. The posters are in Ukrainian. We interpret this one as advertising Countess Lily by Strauss. Inside, we see the ornate decor and gilded boxes, and the house one-quarter filled. For tourists, the outdoor markets provide an outlet for dollars burning a hole in our pockets. There are paintings, and Pizanki replicas of traditional Ukrainian painted eggs and handmade shirts. This one's 18. I like that one. And probably you can get it for 15. The price is determined by bartering, by negotiating. Yes, you're making bargains all the time. Different people paying different sums of money for the same things, actually. <laughs> Such are the ways of supply and demand in a newly independent Ukraine. They sing about Ukraine's destiny as they have sung here for generations. We've heard the saying here, the grandchildren of your grandfather's friends are your friends. This whole area, you find people come down to that square and their day is outside. They'll either be in the park or the down the square. Mm -hmm. And they do things together as a group that uh, we don't ever see. No, they don't seem threatened by the crowd, but rather a sense of protection, neighbors. That's right. And they are neighbors. That's exactly it. Yeah, they and they've been neighbors for centuries in that very square. That's right. Exactly. That's perfect. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, that would look good. At week's end, we leave with trinkets treasures. We leave the people of Ukraine with the greatest treasure of all, the sense of who they are.